Okay, let me break it down for you. Judgment, prejudice, bias, it all still exists. If I want to take this huge, overwhelming problem, I have to start with myself. Finally clicked for me. Compassion is a necessity. The person close to me is an alcoholic. But this isn't their story. It's mine. Just a few months ago, things escalated to a point that I didn't know how to handle. I was pained, angry, and worried. My mind was stuck in a different world, somebody else's world. Someone I loved was struggling, and I couldn't see a solution in that chapter of their lives. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't fix them. I couldn't solve their problems. I couldn't read their mind. Yet, in my mind, thoughts were swirling around for days on end. I often get caught up in my thoughts, and it's so easy to forget that everyone else does too. For all I know, the person standing behind me in line at the supermarket could be thinking, did I buy the dried apricots? Or, am I going to have sex tonight? Or, what am I going to write my suicide note? Everybody has an endless amount of different thoughts constantly buzzing through their mind. Some have no meaning, and some do. Sometimes, through all of this distraction, we forget to remember that compassion is a necessity, because it's inevitable that everybody you pass on the streets could be struggling with something that is real and difficult for them. We can't read each other's minds, and humans fail to remember that people don't always spill out everything they're thinking. We don't know what we don't know. Two things we often don't know someone is dealing with are self-abuse and addiction. If we are aware of it, we often don't understand it. Self-abuse and addiction are often misunderstood and assumed to be the choice of the abuser. It's understandable how people react differently to mental health issues compared to a physical disease. Physical diseases, like cancer, are more tangible and more likely to receive sympathy. Because we cannot see what is happening inside of the brain, there is a cultural stigma against addiction. Suck it up and get on with it, is generally the mindset when people see others that can't seem to take care of themselves and are addicted. Family members of those who have a physical illness are scared of losing the person they love. It is harder to see a mental health illness as a real disease. Although the American Medical Association classified alcohol abuse as a disease in 1966 and drug abuse eight years later, someone with an illness of addiction may be assumed to be choosing addiction, to be weak-willed or to be deserving of it. For the family of an addict, they may also be scared but they often find dealing with the abuser frustrating. The addict is a nuisance. Everyone has to clean up after them. It makes you angry. I mean, how could they be so selfish, right? After many years of trying to protect and find solutions, my anger, stress, and deep sorrow had reached its finish line. I realize now that in the past, I would seek out short-term solutions. I hid the evidence to protect them. I made threats to get them to stop. I made up stories to explain their behavior. I avoided social situations, so I didn't have to answer difficult questions. I didn't think about the long-term impact. I just wanted the worry and stress to stop. I distanced myself from them and hoped that the terror in our relationship would force them to stop hurting themselves as well as others around them. Our personal experiences develop our interests. These interests lead us to research. Research leads us to a better understanding, and a better understanding leads us to compassion. Sometimes the pain we've experienced weakens, and our understanding grows. Some people take months or years to go through this process. Some take a lifetime. For me, Greenstone has been a part of that process. 
it has increased my understanding and compassion, not just towards other people with addiction, but also myself. The next step of this journey is sharing with you what I've learned in an academic sense about self-abuse and addiction. So how would I define the two? How are they different or the same to one another? Self-abuse can also be defined as self-neglect. It's a failure to take care of yourself that causes, or is reasonably likely to cause, serious physical, mental, or emotional harm. In other words, it's a behavior that causes harm or damage to oneself. Addiction is when a person is physically and or mentally dependent on a particular substance, thing, or activity. In regards to substance addiction, they're usually unable to stop taking it without incurring adverse effects. Addiction falls under the definition of self-abuse. The psychologist Gabor Mate said, when people suffer from emotional rejection, the same part of the brain will light up as if you stuck them with a knife. Finding this out left me feeling conflicted. On one hand, I wanted to help and support the person I loved. But on the other hand, I didn't want to show them that I supported their behavior or encourage them to continue with this extremely harmful addiction. I wanted to get to the bottom of things and figure out why people would abuse themselves in the first place. To be able to understand the cause of addiction, one must stop looking at what's wrong with it and instead Look at what is right about it. What do addicts gain from their addiction? What are they getting that otherwise they do not have? Generally, the answer to these questions are along the same lines. They are relieved of pain. They feel peaceful, have a sense of control, sense of calmness, but all very temporarily. And from this stems more questions. Why are these qualities missing from their lives? What happened to them? I wanted to look into this on a deeper level, so I talked to a few recovered addicts and family members of current users. One of the recovered addicts I talked to, let's call him Bill, said, one of the things that will help us get closer to the truth is realizing how far away from the truth we are when we start. And sometimes, we don't even realize how far away that is. He explained his views on addiction. It's like a Rubik's Cube. I could put a Rubik's Cube on a table in front of me, and I could ask you, what color is it? For you, because you can only see the blue side, you're going to tell me it's blue. But from where I'm standing, it's green. And from another person's angle, it's yellow or white. We also need to remember that there will always be one side we cannot see. Although our answers are all different, we're all right. And that's the nature of the truth. It really depends on where you're standing. It's about perspective. We don't know what we don't know. Essentially, there are two different theories on addiction and self-abuse. One theory is that addiction is predisposed, that it's literally in your DNA and in your lineage. The other is that trauma and pain lead people to resort to self-abuse. There's much more evidence regarding trauma to lead, people, to lead people to become addicts than there is to say it's in your genes. But what people don't understand is that trauma doesn't have to be a quick, sudden, possibly secretive experience to happen to somebody. And addiction doesn't have to be as severe as overdosing on heroin. Addiction is addiction. I asked Bill, what made you fall into addiction? He opened my eyes by saying, you used the word fall, which sort of assumes that somebody is in one place beforehand and ends up somewhere else later. When you fall, you presumably fall from somewhere that's higher to somewhere that's lower. Is a person always necessarily in a higher place when they start using drugs? Or before they start using drugs? That's not always so obvious. Even in the way you're asking the question, it is based on certain assumptions, which may or may not be true. For an addict, they've likely already fallen before they decide to drink, sniff, shoot, gamble. Bill continued to share with me, that's the real core of addiction. It's sort of a warped ego, filtering the truth, filtering reality and twisting things in a way that can leave you quite unsettled in the moment. And it's very hard to find peace. There's a constant state of disturbance. What happens to people 
is that they learn that drugs are a solution, because they are. If that's your reality, that state of never being at ease, peace or contentment, there's a dark hole in your soul. Drugs fill that hole in a temporary, very unsustainable way. We need to understand that addiction is not the problem, but the solution to people who are in pain. If we truly want to overcome addiction, we need to find more effective solutions to people who are in this situation. Gabor Mate said, if you look at drugs like heroin, like morphine, like codeine, if you look at cocaine or alcohol, they are all painkillers. One way or another, they all soothe pain. The real question in addiction is not why the addiction, but why the pain. Despite their differences, every single family member of an addict that I interviewed contemplated, I wonder what happened to them when talking about the addict in their lives. Yet there was a pattern as they recalled stories of trauma and unhappy memories for the addict. They all varied in severity, but when a painful event happens to someone, it is still pain and it cannot be compared. As I got closer to the truth, I realized that the more I learned, the more I didn't know. Because really, something that's important to, re important to realize about the truth is that there's actually no such thing. There's no definitive place in my mind that I'm going to arrive at where I suddenly realize that I understand it. But one really valuable thing to come out of this was the deepening of my insight in a way that was personally beneficial to me. It's up to us to understand issues that before today have been swept under the rug and painfully ignored. It's up to us to train our minds to think about others constantly. I don't blame people for thinking about themselves. It's human nature to self-preserve. But we must find a line between self-preservation and caring about others. For when you help others, you help yourself. As quoted from the Tibetan book of Living and Dying, whatever you do, don't try to escape from your pain, but be with it. Because the attempt to escape from pain is what creates more pain, and that is the reality of addiction. Thank you.